divine invitation. My talk today is about infection-induced cancers. Undoubtedly, as a cancer has a major public health concern, and the impacts of cancer are multiple and far-reaching, affecting people of both gender, all ages, and nationalities. It accounts for 13% of annual global mortality, contributing to over 7.9 million deaths each year. And this figure may project it to nearly 10 million unless this problem is addressed urgently. Carcinogenesis is a complex process involving the contribution of many different factors. And the most important advance in oncology ever is the understanding that most cancers have specific etiologies and that these causes may be identified leading potentially to their control. Some of causes of cancer are attributed to the infectious agents. Microbial carcinogenesis is considered now a public major health concern, and almost we are we are almost certain that many cancers have any have infectious etiologies, especially those with viral etiology. And here is the International Agency for Research of Cancer on May 2012, announcing that worldwide an estimated 17.8% of neoplasts are attributed to infections, and this percentage ranged to, uh, to less than 10% in developed or high-income countries. Another publication in uh, Lancet Journal of Oncology on May 2015 it uh, announced that the contribution of cancer in um, uh, of infections in cancer ranges from 15 to 20 percent, and post experimental and epidemiological data imply positive rule for viruses, particularly in cervical and liver cancer. Viruses must be sought as the second most common risk factor for cancer development in humans, exceeded only by tobacco consumption. Infections can attribute can contribute to development of human tumors by many different mechanisms. The first one and most important is the induction of chronic inflammation or rapid cell proliferation, the direct carcinogenic effect via production of oncoproteins, or altering the expression of host cell proteins leading to DNA damage, and indirect mechanisms by inducing immunosuppression or modifying the host cell genome, immune stimulation of cancer growth factors, and genomic instability via viral genomic integration. Coming to the point of chronic inflammation and carcinogenesis, it's a big story and it can cause cancers in s via three main arms. The first one is chronic host pathogen interaction, which leads eventually to immunosuppression and the state of oxidative stress induced by chronic inflammation, which leads to DNA damage and mutation, cell injury, and the promotion of cell division. And lastly, infection inducing cell proliferation. The link between cancer and inflammation was proposed by Virchow in the 18th of 1860, and since then, the potential relationship between cancer and inflammation have been studied. Viruses are now an ac accepted as a genuine etiologic factor for human cancer. It is clear that there are many pathogens that can have the capability of inducing oncogenesis. Being able to prevent the spread of these infectious agents can reduce the likelihood of people to get infected, thus reducing the opportunity for infection to become car cancerous. Treating long-term infection could have a direct or tertiary opportunity to reduce the risk of associated with prolonged exposure to the organisms that can induce oncogenesis. And here is another publication which announces that the most important cancers caused by infection are Kaposi sarcoma, lymphoma, hepatocellular carcinoma, anogenital cancers, gastric cancers, and other T-cell lymphoma. Cancer cervix and hepatocellular carcinoma accounts for about 80% of virus-related cancers. The International Agency for Research on Cancer has classified the following infectious agent as carcinogen, or probably carcinogen, that is, as causing or contributing to cancer development in humans. These infectious agents are epstein barr virus, as I identified cause of for Perkins lymphoma, Hodgkin's lymphoma, non-Hodgkin lymphoma, nasopharyngeal carcinoma, hepatitis B as a cause of hepatocellular carcinoma, hepatitis C as a cause of hepatocellular carcinoma and non-Hodgkin lymphoma, human papilloma virus type, 16 and 18 as a cause of anal cancer, cervical cancer, oral cancer, penile cancer, oropharyngeal cancer, vaginal cancer, and vulvar cancer, HIV being implicated in a variety of immunosuppression associated cancers such as anal cancer, colo uh, cervical cancer, conjunctival cancer, Hodgkin lymphoma, Kaposi sarcoma, non Hodgkin lymphoma, human T lymphotropic virus being a cause of adult T cell le leukemia. Kaposi sarcoma, herpes virus as a, as a cause of Kaposi sarcoma and primary effusion lymphoma, H. pylori, 
a bacteria as a causative agent of gastric cancer, and schistosomiasis as a causative agent of bladder cancer, and finally some fungi are also uh, now يعني, known as identified cause for uh, hepatocellular carcinoma such as Aspergillus flavus and the Aspergillus parasiticus, which uh, uh, the mode of carcinogenesis is the uh, induction of aflatoxin production. So the major infection associated malignancies are gastric carcinoma having H. pylori as a causative agent, cervical cancer having a human papilloma virus as a causative agent, hepatocellular carcinoma with HCV and HPV as a causative agent, Perkins lymphoma, nasopharyngeal carcinoma caused by epstein barr Kaposi sarcoma, non hodgkin lymphoma by HIV, bladder cancer by schistosomiasis and adult T-cell leukemia and lymphoma by human T-cell lymphotropic virus. And here is the evidence of the infection-associated cancer starting from 1997, where the World Health uh, Organization estimated that up to 84% of cases of some cancers are attributable to viruses, bacteria, and parasites, and that more than 1.5 million new cases each year could be avoided by preventing the infectious disease associated with them. In 1994, the International Agency for Research of, uh, on Cancer concluded that infection of humans with H. pylori is associated <laughs> in 1994, H. pylori was identified cause of non-logical lymphoma, mild lymphoma of the stomach. Another landmark study published in June 1997 shows that 12 years nationwide vaccination program against hepatitis B virus in Taiwan resulted in a significant reduction in the number of cases of childhood liver cancer. The infectious origin of carcinoma of the cervix has been long suspected because known risk factors of the disease are linked to sexual activity. Recent evidence indicates that human papilloma virus serotype 16 and 17 are definitely carcinogenic in human, however type 31 and 33 are probably carcinogenic. So the true cancer control aspires to prevent cancer, to detect cancer to an early stage, and to treat and hopefully cure the disease in those who are diagnosed and to increase the survival and quality of life in those who develop it. We have many prevention and control efforts via population-based education and awareness campaigns which are urgently required to increase the screening rates for, for individuals at risk, to facilitate the early diagnosis and prompt treatment and thereby reducing morbidity and improving survival. Approaches to controlling infection-related cancers. There are attempts to reduce infection-related cancers which involve efforts to prevent the infection or control the ongoing disease processes. And here's some evidence about the approaches to control infection-related cancers as published in Lancet Oncology. It states that many infection-related cancers are preventable, particularly those associated with H. pylori, hepatitis B, hepatitis C, and human papilloma virus. Together, these four main infections are estimated to be responsible for 1.9 million cases, mainly gastric, liver, and cervical cancers. Also, they add that out of the 7.5 million deaths from cancer worldwide, as estimated in 2008, an estimated 1.5 million cases were for cancers resulting from infections. So, to prevent infection-induced cancers, we have many approaches. The first one is the vaccine approach. And in the vaccine approach, there are two approaches for vaccination, aiming at preventing the infection from the start, which is named prophylactic vaccination, and the other aiming at prevention of the disease development following infection, known as therapeutic vaccination. The other approach is the antibacterial approach. A prototype of antibacterial approach to cancer prevention is the treatment of H. pylori. It is over two decades since the discovery of H. pylori as a cause of gastric cancer, Early H. pylori eradication is known to lead to decrease the risk of gastric cancer in patients with peptic ulcer disease. Effective treatment with antibiotics in combination with good hygiene could decrease the incidence of gastric cancer. And regarding the antiviral approach, our best example is the treatment of drug therapy for chronic hepatitis B. Antiviral therapies have been shown to delay the progression of cirrhosis, lowering the incidence of HCC, thus improving long-term survival. Another example, is the AIDS-associated malignancy, which is a major complication associated with AIDS patients among immunosuppression, who causes markedly increased risk of developing cancers. Through the antiviral, antiretroviral therapy and heart therapy, the malignant complications due to HIV-1 infection have decreased in developed countries. 
finally to conclude, the multi-stop nature of microbial oncogenesis provides an ample opportunities for interventions to mitigate the process and prevent cancer. Better understanding of the role of microbes in human cancer will have therapeutic implications as control can be instituted. And the best strategy is to prevent the infection by preventing exposure to oncogenic agents and keep an eye on chronic inflammation. Finally, our challenge for future is to better understand these steps in microbe-induced cancers to optimize post-prevention and therapy. And thank you.